How did Her Interactive choose the next Nancy Drew mystery? Kalina here of Story Retold. When Her Interactive got the license for the Nancy Drew IP, intellectual property, they had to start with the main source available, the books. With hundreds of books across multiple series, how did they choose the right story to be made into an interactive experience? All the info I'm sharing with you has already been released to the public, and I will show you these places and link them to in the description below. Based on data from the 1990s, the best-selling Nancy Drew series at the time was the Nancy Drew Files series, which was aimed towards teens because they had a lot more uh, drama, intense mysteries, heavier criminal activity, danger, fashion, and romance. So that was the chosen direction. The first book being Secrets Can Kill. Now, after that game was set, uh, discussions had to be had, new decisions were to be made about the next installments to the game series. Side note, the story was a collaborative team effort. The writer wrote the story in the script form for the characters and in the in-game written assets, while the designer actually worked out the map and the logic of the layout of the mystery with the dialogue and puzzles and how it all just flows together. But the entire design team was involved heavily with the mystery and story. According to Nick the writer in 2012, each game had a book origin, even if it was just used as a launching pad. A lot of people wanted to know if you reference the Nancy Drew books when you write a script. We do. Some we're very close to, and mm -hmm. some we use as a almost a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. uh, Ash was a game where we stuck very close to yeah. a couple different books. Every game has a book starting point. Now, the first games were heavily based on the books by the same titles, but the team wanted future games to have more variety. While the team could not take uh, specific ideas from fans, they did take concepts, thoughts, trends, elements from what the fans wanted and were requesting, and incorporated them into the internal development team's game design. But we do spend a lot of time on the message board. Uh, I spend actually quite a bit of uh, time checking in with what people are thinking about the games, what they like, mm. what they dislike. And while we don't take a specific idea, we do try to sort of take the temperature of what, what the fans like. Mm. We don't take uh, specific ideas for mysteries. And the reason for that is we actually have a, a ton of ideas internally that we're really excited to get to. Mm. In a blog post, designer Kathy at the time mentioned that they didn't want to have back-to-back -back scary games, so they alternated between scary and mystery adventure. When a location and a mystery or crime was determined, the research on the culprit's motive, means, and opportunities were researched. Arson, revenge, sabotage, and the theme or historical character were integrated. So far, all the games have gone over like a major theme or historical figure as the main plot point. So for example, we've got Marie Antoinette in Treasure in the Royal Tower, the Mayan civilization in Secret of the Scarlet Hand, Japanese culture and traditions in Shadow at the Water's Edge, science and Nikola Tesla's history, Egyptology and Queen Nefertari, the American witch trials of Salem, Massachusetts, and so much more. When these major decisions were made, Her Interactive pulled a very classic Nancy Drew move per tradition of past game designers. They hid clues to future games in the current game they were working on. For example, in the fifth game, the final scene, Maya Wynn's name does contain a clue to Mayan, which is the theme in the Scarlet Hand. Also at the end of the game, in the final scene, you'll see the Scarlet Hand print on the tabloid. Another example, in the 31st game, Labyrinth of Lies, there is a more obvious clue uh, given by Joe Hardy about Salem. Our in-flight movie was about Salem, and apparently Joe took away the wrong lesson. How have I lived this long without knowing how fun reckless accusations are? Salem was one of the ideas that her inter the Her Interactive team had in mind when they were working in the tw on, on the 24th game, The Captive Curse. So you can see in Sunny June's 
uh, resume that Salem, Massachusetts is one of the locations that he had been. There are a lot more hidden clues to the games, including like the um, coordinates to Japan, which is found in Warnings at Waverly Academy, just to name another one. Your password is WAC35NE136. As for game 34, After Midnight in Salem, I cannot say. I have some ideas because I was a part of some of the discussions, but I cannot say what, what all transpired behind the scenes. All I know is that the process for choosing the next Nancy Drew games has changed since these traditional ways. For now, we just have to speculate and close eye on her interactive. Okay, fan note time. Let's do a shout out to Charity Chaz vs. Jazz. She happens to discover the latest trademark title, Mystery of the Seven Keys. Her interactive trademark this name, even though they've never trademarked any previous game titles before, so it might be a clue that that could be the next game title. We will see. Comment below your thoughts, ideas, and findings below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.